All right, so here we're looking to find the value of the inverse trig function. In the first example, we're going to find the exact value. In the second one, we're going to find the approximate value. So with the exact value, this one we can find without even using a calculator. We can rem look at our unit circle, and in quadrant one, we look at cosine. Cosine is equal to one-half at what angle? We know that it is pi over 3 gets us cosine of 1 half. So that's using like the reference angle. But because we are negative, we know that puts us in quadrant 2. And it could also be the same in quadrant 3, but when we find these exact values, we're looking for the one that is we're coming to first, basically. And so we're looking at 2 pi over 3 in quadrant 2 would give us that negative value of 1 half for our cosine. So the cosine inverse of negative 1 half is going to be equal to 2 pi over 3. That's without using my calculator. Now in this case, we want to find the approximate value. Approximate means it's not going to be exact, so it won't be a fraction. It could be a decimal. Of the inverse trig function, expressed again in radians, and round to two decimal places. So if we're looking at the sine inverse of 3 eighths and we want to get radians, remember we're going to have to be in radian mode. So we're going to put that in our calculator, doing our second sine function on the calculator to get the second inverse, or get the inverse function of sine of 3 eighths, and that's going to be equal to 0 0.38. That would be to two decimal places. If you are in a different mode, if you're in degrees, you will get a different answer. So make sure you check the mode of your calculator.